Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing Calc D, note 7, page 4, which is still taking a look at double integrals. Um, there's an idea that we want to kind of develop here, and it has to do with if the integrand can be written a certain way. So if h of xy is the integrand, and it can be rewritten as f of x times g of y, and so there's two requirements. First, you can rewrite it as a product of a function of x times a product a uh, function of y. Right, that's one requirement. And then the second requirement would be that the bounds of the integral are constant. So you have to be uh, integrating over a rectangle. But if you can write it as a product of two functions, one of x, one of y, and you're integrating over a rectangle, then the following is true. The integral from a to b, uh, a to b, c to d, of h of xy dy dx is the integral from a to b of f of x dx times the integral from c to d, uh, sorry, c to d of g of y dy. I'm kind of laughing at where the y ended up at the end of this. Um, so uh, that's a big deal. And we're going to use that kind of every chance we get because it takes uh, a double integral that seems like it's going to be challenging and just turns it into a simple integral. And as sort of a preview, this will happen frequently later on when we do polar integrals. So when we're doing the double integrals in polar coordinates, uh, we're going to find that this property holds uh, almost all the time. Not not all the time, but like a lot. Um, so to reiterate, though, you must be integrating over a rectangle. So let me show you like why this works. Although you can, if you just do a couple of examples, I think you'll like see why it works or you'll get a sense of how it works. So initially what you're doing is you're going to do this integral with respect to y, the inner in integral. But when you do that, our f of x is just a constant. So that's a constant. And when you do an integral, you can factor a constant out. So at this point, I could rewrite what I'm looking at as this. So it's the integral from a to b of f of x. And then the, we have this little internal integral that's all in terms of y and dy. So that now is a constant. And if it's a constant and you're integrating with respect to x, you can factor it out. So finally, I'd factor that out and I end up here. So that's why this is going to work. It's got to be over a rectangle. If it's not over a rectangle or constant bounds, um, you can't do it because one of the bounds will depend upon one of the variables and it's a messy situation. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do three double integrals. I'm going to use this property if it comes up. If it doesn't come up, I'm just going to do them the normal way. So here is the first. I'm going to go from 2 to 4, from 1 to 3, x times y squared dy dx. My first thought is, I am integrating over a rectangle, so maybe I can use this property. And then I look at it and I can see that, yeah, definitely I can use this property because my functions are x and y squared, and they're just functions of x and functions of y. So I'm going to start off by rewriting this thing as the integral of x from two to four times the integral of y squared from one to three. And now this is, we're back in calc one. So uh, plus one times the reciprocal, and we're going from two to four plus one times the reciprocal, and we're going from one to three. So it's really nice, just reversing the power rule. Uh, subbing in, we get 16 minus four over two times 27 minus one over three. Doing some arithmetic, we end up at six times 26 over three, which gives us 52 as our final answer. So that's one where you can apply, if you can apply it, the problems are usually quicker because it's usually just a little bit easier to do the, uh, find antiderivatives, I guess. Um, all right, let's look at another one. All right, so 0 to 2, 1 to 2, 1 over the quantity x plus y squared. So uh, that you cannot rewrite as just a function of x times a function of y. So if it had been 1 over x times y squared, then we could have made it 1 over x, 1 over y squared, and done the thing. But now we can't do it, so we're going to have to find another way. So the reason that's not going to work for us, oops, the reason that's not going to work for us is that... Um, that's not a product of f of x times g of y. All right, so instead we have to do it. I like to rewrite this kind of integrand. Usually I just do it in my head, but since we're, we're just kind of starting out with these problems, I'm going to show the work. So I rewrite it to the negative second. I'm going to do plus one times the reciprocal. There is no chain rule that we need to worry about here. If it had been like uh, x plus 5y, we would need a one-fifth on the outside of this thing. But we don't need that because we're just going to integrate. So plus one times the reciprocal, I still have the outer integral. I'm going to get uh, the quantity to the negative first times negative one. So I'm going to write it as negative one over x plus y. 
and the y bounds are one to two, and there's still a dx. So now we just substitute. And if you've done a lot of antiderivatives in your life, you know that we're headed toward natural logs here. Um, make sure you put in absolute values when you do it because of domain reasons uh, and because they should be there. So we're gonna get negative natural log absolute value of x plus two, and then plus natural log absolute value of x plus one. And then that's going from zero to two. Now we're subbing in, I'm gonna do some natural log work here. So I get negative natural log of four plus the natural log of three minus quantity negative natural log of two. And then the natural log of one is zero, so it just dropped out. Now we can simplify this because it's really negative natural log of four plus natural log of three plus natural log of two. So everything that has a plus is going in the numerator, everything with a minus is going in the denominator. So I can write this as one fraction as natural log of four down there, two times three is six. So the natural log of three halves is where I would end up there. All right, we're gonna do one more problem and then we'll be done with page four of the notes. So the problem looks like uh, the integral from one to three, uh, integral from zero to pi over three, y squared cosine of x dx dy. All right, so this one actually is a product of a function of x and a function of y. So the function of x is cosine, function of y is uh, y squared. So I'm gonna break this up into a product of integrals. And this, so this is an amazing thing that you can do. It doesn't work in single variable because everything is a function of the same variable. But in multiple variables, this is a great property. It would work uh, in, in triple integrals too. If uh, you had three functions like f of x, uh, g of y, h of z, and you have a rectangle uh, or I guess a rectangular prism as your bounds, constant bounds, you could use the same property. All right, let's do this. Plus one times the reciprocal, going from one to three. And then the integral of cosine is sine. And we're going from zero to pi over three. And then we're going to evaluate. So we get 27 minus 1 over 3. And then we'll get, I mean, sine of pi over 3 minus sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. That's very important to know. Sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So this is going to give me 26 over 3 times radical 3 over 2. Or 13 radical 3 all over 3. So there you go. All right, I'm going to end this one here. I will be back in the next video. And in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, when the bounds are not constants, so when they are functions, sometimes. Um, so we'll take a look at that. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next one.